Lesson 19, solving one-step equations by adding or subtracting. An equation is a, is a statement that uses an equal sign to show that two quantities are equal. Equal is in this word here, equation, it has that first part, equal, and for it to be an equation there has to be an equal sign. Sometimes we get confused between, between equations and expressions. An expression does not have an equal sign where an equation does. Okay, a solution of an equation in one variable is a value of the variable that makes the equation true. So, for example, it says, state whether the value of the variable is a solution for the equation. So, to tell whether or not this works, we can... To tell whether or not this works, I can solve by substitution to see if it's really true that one side is equal to the other. So in this case, x, I have 6, which I'm going to plug in using parentheses, plus 7 equals 13. Well, 6 plus 7 equals 13, and this is saying that 13 equals 13, so that checks out, that would be true, it's a solution, yes. On this one, same situation, I'm going to substitute for y, instead of y I'm going to put 12 because they say that y is equal to 12, minus 4 equals 9, 12 minus 4, that gives me 8, equals 9, does 8 equal 9? No. So we say, no, that that's not a solution. Okay, so we're going to do some extra practice with this. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the variable by itself. And to get the variable by itself, that means I have to move everything away from the variable. So if I have x, like in this case I do, um, and 3 is being subtracted from it, well the opposite of subtracting 3 would be to add 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3, and what I do to one side of the equal sign, okay, this is my equal sign, what I do to one side I must always do to the other for it to stay true. So since I added 3 here, I'm going to add 3 over here. So 3's here will cancel out to 0. I have x. Bring my equal sign down. 12 plus 3 is 15. Same thing here. My n is on the right side. It does not matter which side it's on. I still want to get everything away from it. So if n is here and 8 is being added to it, the opposite of adding 8 to n would be to subtract 8 from n. And what I do to one side of the equal sign, this is this side, I must do to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8 from this side. So those will cancel out. 15 minus 8 is 7. And bring everything else down so I know that n must be equal to 7. I want you to pause the video at this point and try C and D on your own paper, please. On C, we're trying to get k by itself. 7 is being added to k, so the opposite of adding would be subtracting, so I'm going to subtract 7. What I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other side of the equal sign. So those will cancel out. I have k equals 13 minus 7 is 6. Final answer. On d, p is right here. 9 is being added to it. I want to get p by itself, so I'm going to do the opposite, which is to subtract 9. What I do to one side of the equal sign, whoops, one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other, so I'm going to subtract 9 from over here. So 9's will cancel, I bring my p down. Negative 21 minus 9 is going to give me negative 30. Final answer. On this one, um, fractions work the same way as whole numbers do. We're going to do the exact same process. So I have x plus 1 fourth equals 3 eighths. To get x by itself, I have to do the opposite, so I'm going to subtract 1 fourth. What I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 1 fourth from over here. So my x comes down, my equal sign comes down. And I can't do the subtraction right now because I don't have a common denominator. So between 8 and 4, a common denominator would be 8. So I have 3 eighths, and I'm still subtracting. I have to have something over 8 here. 4 goes into 8 2 times. 2 times 1 is 2. 2. So 3 eighths minus 2 eighths is going to give me 1 eighth. Final answer. It is also important that you always have the variable equal to. This is what, this is what tells me 
what your final answer is. Do not just give me one eighth. I need to know that x equals one eighth because whenever we start working with multiple variables, I need to know which one is which. Final answer here, the temperature in Lubbock, Texas rose 16 degrees Fahrenheit in one week to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. At what temperature did the week begin? So it says that it rose 16 degrees to 97 degrees. So if it rose, I know that I'm adding 16. And what it rose to was this 97. So whatever happens over here, 16 is being added to it, and it has to equal 97 degrees. So I don't know what the temperature T was before, but I'm going to find out. So to get T by itself, all I need to do is subtract 16. What I do to one side, I must do to the other. T's will cancel, or 16's will cancel. T comes straight down. That is a 6. I'm really sorry. T comes straight down equals 97 minus 16, which is going to be 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Final answer. That's it for today. Make sure you've taken good notes. I will see you in class tomorrow.